Welcome to the Mandala Garden. I want to take this opportunity to show you around, to um, both give you a tour of the garden but also inspire you to um, take action in your own communities and build living sanctuaries, build food forests and enjoy real food. So here we are at the Mandala Garden. It is August and you are standing um, in the east coming into the garden. This is the view of the garden that you see behind me. And when I designed the garden and when I was first dreaming of the garden, I really wanted to make it um, align with, as you can see my son is watering, um, align with the elements. And it is important to align with the elements because everything in the world is made out of the five elements in different um, constitutions and different degrees and different percentages. And when we align with the elements, we also align with our earthly rhythms, we align with the earth. And we begin to anchor more deeply into what it means to be made of earth, what it means to be made of air, or water, fire, ether. And all these concepts, I'm going to be talking about them as I tour you through the garden. So right now, you are standing in the east. And the east is a place of illumination, it is a place of uh, the sunrise. It is also the place of, um, in shamanism, of the puma or the jaguar. Um, but it's also the place of the element of fire. So, you know, how, where, how is our inner fire? Where are our passions? And how can we begin to nurture our passions? Not only through our, you know, what we like or not like, but also through what we do and how we act in the world. Um, right now, in the view of the garden, you can see this, you know, on the spiral, we have all sorts of herbs growing. We also have, um, wherever you see a blanket is because it's been newly seeded or I am, uh, you know, taking really good care of the produce. So we have really big grasshoppers that have come in and stuff like that. We don't want them around. So um, that's what we're trying to control. We don't, we're not going to garden. We don't spray. Um, and everything that has been seeded now for the fall. So everything that has a blanket has been seeded and we've done uh, rutabaga, beets, turnips, Kale, um, we've done some arugula, we've done spinach, we've done a lot of different things. Uh, in the far back we have a marshmallow, we have a strawberry bed, we have where you see those kind of big tripods. Uh, we have beans coming, pole beans coming, we've already done, uh, been through a round of snap peas and green peas. Um, so we've taken them out and reseeded in the last couple of days. We also have lots of squashes growing, yellow beans growing. Um, daikon, broccoli. I'm going to actually take you around, take you in. But that, this is the view of the garden from the east as you walk into the Mandala Garden. Now you are standing in the southeast. And southeast is really the space of the soul purpose. It's the space of the I am. It's the space of um, that drive that leads us to act on, you know, on behalf of being of service to the world. Um, on this, from this view of the garden, you can see that we have two beautiful melons that have come in. Melon is a garden plant and it is a wild, you know, and it's edible. Uh, parts of it are edible, parts of it are for medicine. Um, but also, like, it, it's, it's come by itself and you can see that there's two guardian melons just at its, you know, entrance into the garden. There's also another one on the northwest, which is pretty interesting. Is that the northwest is a place of the hummingbird, and it's standing true. Um, as you see, there's also, you know, in pretty much in every direction, melon has come into the garden and it's standing tall and true. Um, we are growing on this bed. We're growing some daikon. We're growing some um, kohlrabi. We're growing some. Uh, broccoli, we have squashes coming in, kale is under the blanket as well. We've recently reseeded we part of it. Um, farther back you can see some tomatoes, you can see some Brussels sprouts, and I'm going to bring you in closer this time. Uh, but to my right we have a beautiful um, wild edible that uh, most people just take out of the gardens and you know stomp on it a few times and put it away. But it's actually called uh, lamb's quarters, it is a wild spinach and it's really really powerful. and um, there it is, it's standing tall and true as well. So we eat it here at the garden, we put it in our CSA boxes, and we also juice it. So it's very, very powerful, much more than just your typical spinach. So 
don't throw it out. <laughs> um, we have uh, also like all the, all the sunflowers and I love, you know, putting them in the garden. Some of them we plant uh, from seed and some of them just come. And I find it really interesting this year. Last year we had them all around the herb spiral and we tried to do it again this year, but it didn't happen. And they've kind of come wherever they wanted to come this year. So we let them be. Um, the place where you're standing uh, is really an important place. And when I was dreaming again of the garden, um, I wanted that connection to purpose. The garden, this Mandela garden here at the Real End Ranch, it is a living sanctuary. It is a place of healing, it is a place of transformation, it is a place of transmutation, of development, of shape shifting. It is a place of beauty, of creating beauty, of anchoring into beauty. It is a place of really tapping into Mother Earth and, you know, being of service with what comes through us. Sometimes we think that perhaps our life or even the mandala garden is something that you know we've made but it's really the life that pulls us forward it's really the dream that's you know dreaming itself alive through us um, and i wanted to create a container you know especially here in the west we have very few spaces where we can really come as a community and connect with each other connect with ourselves and connect with the sacred life that you know that is our everyday but often we don't tap into that aspect of it um, yeah so that was a big uh, intention for creating the garden. That was a big anchoring in the development of what has happened in the garden and how we use the garden. The garden is not just a, a place where we grow organic food. It is a food forest and it is a place of high energy. It is a place of ceremony. It is a place of meditation. It is a place of tapping into oneself and one's, you know, one's source. So there you go. The view from the south east and you also the view from that space of um, that draws us forward in right action Here we are, you're standing in the south. The south is Pachamama, is Mother Earth. It is, um, the, the element of the south is ether. It, sorry, it's earth, not ether. <laughs> the element in the south is ether. It, uh, here we go again. The element of, I think ether really wants to speak through me right now. Um, the element of the south is earth. And um, you know, what, the, the, the place where we give solidity to our actions, the place where we, um, you know, we can, we can have a, a sensorial tactile experience of our dream. Um, from here we can see, you know, a, a very different view and then you can start seeing more perhaps what's in the herb spiral. You see another you know, melon that has come in. We see Brussels sprouts and beets and then there's kale hiding away. Um, and there's also, you know, something kind of, that is behind you is an orchard. So all surrounding the mandala garden, which is a circle, right? The mandala in Sanskrit means sacred circle. And that's what we've created. The energy that is contained here and the energy that is, uh, you know, <laughs> with, within which food is grown doesn't leave the garden. It stays in the garden. And that's why it's just so potent. Um, and also just the, 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 the fact that it is... Um, a place of meditation, a place of, you know, anchoring into oneself, all that feeds our garden too, not just the soil, not just the, you know, the elements, not just um, the rains, all that feeds the garden. In the place of the earth, it's really, you know, we want to think about, or the place of the south, um, you know, what, what, what are we giving shape into in our lives? And, the, you know, when I'm standing in this place, um, I'd like to be able to, you know, visit with the other elements, but from here I, I can see the east, which is the entrance to the garden, and the other entrance of the garden, which is the northeast. So it's a really beautiful space to be, you know, where we can take a look back, you know, perhaps kind of detach a little bit from where we are at, and just see, you know, what's coming into our lives, what's, what are we allowing to flow out of our lives from a place of 
in a more dense reality. Now you're standing in the west looking into the garden and as you can see it looks like a mass <laughs> like a massive jungle right now um, we have tomatoes growing here we have sunflowers and behind there are beds that have uh, chard that have broccoli that i have um, bok choy we have a beautiful um, plum tree it is uh, part of the orchard and it is also our first the fruit first fruit that's coming into the garden most of our trees were very young when we planted them so we're very much looking forward to enjoying our plums this year. Um, but the, the West, and you know, the West is the place of water, but it's also, the, so the element is water. Um, the animals are the whale and the dolphin, but it is also the place of where, it's an emotional realm. And you know, I think it's quite interesting that it's just so busy and dynamic, <laughs> would be the right word. To use um, yeah very dynamic and it's you know as we are we're very dynamic emotional beings right at least I am um, so there you go um, we have also a very big I don't know if you can see it right now but I'll go that way soon um, a very big blackberry bush that's kind of very alive as well we have beans growing whole beans growing and there's fennel and there are cabbages growing different lettuces and here we are, standing at the west. Well, that was a bit of a wild adventure. Um, now you're standing in the north and it's a much clearer view, isn't it? The north is the place of spirit. It is the place of the element of air. It is the place of condor and um, eagle. And it is the place of spiritual guidance, spiritual clarity. Um, you know, we were just in the west and it was quite the jungle, right? So I, I love just the symbology of it all and just how the garden grows in whatever way the garden wants to grow. And you know, as a gardener, just letting go of that need for perfection and need for things to be 100%. You know, we, we've used permaculture in our garden to learn about systems and, and food, um, you know, kind of food forests. Uh, learn about systems that allow us the freedom to not be here all the time, the freedom to, you know, grow and interplant and companion plant and not have a lot of you know weeds come up. We, we um, do the sheet mulching in terms of uh, putting, uh, I don't know if you've noticed around, well now things are pretty covered, but um, cardboard first and then layers of newspaper and straw and earth. And then, you know, then we plant, then we put uh, quite a bit of either straw or uh, mulch on our beds. And that really prevents the weeds from coming up. So for example, this bed, we just pulled out all our green peas and we've harvested now with pole beans. So tomorrow I'm gonna to be building our little antennas, a little tripod over here, and then those beans are gonna start growing. Um, we have squash, and I love, look at that, look at the leaf of the heart, you know, it's, a, it's, it's just beautiful. Um, we have another melon, which is very interesting and again, powerful. Right behind you, actually, when I first started to scan, um, there's a really beautiful mugwort and motherwort, and you are kind of surrounded in this horseshoe of tomato plants. Um, that's where you're standing. And we can see from our east, we can see our entrance, we can see our you know garden shed, we can see our zucchini plants, and this is Phoebe, and we can see our cucumbers, we can see our watermelons, we have a few watermelons growing this year, we have chard, broccoli, again, uh, chicory, we have different lettuces, we have another melon right there at the northeast. Um, but it's a much different scenario and space, right? The clarity that you have right now versus the clarity, you know, the kind of abundance of wildness that was um, in the west. So enjoy the view from the north.
here we are at the center of the garden. This is uh, the herb spiral. It is also the center that has, has a wild apple tree, um, a wild purple flesh apple tree. Uh, and it is the space that holds the garden together. It is the most inner circle of the garden. It is the herb spiral. There's both herbs and medicinals in the spiral. And um, it is the space uh, of ether, the element of ether, which is the element of um, the container that holds sacred space. So, you know, what kind of container, you know, what is holding us and what kind of container are we creating that continues to both nourish us so we can nourish the world. When we, you know, perhaps it was the second year, so two years ago, um, we did a ceremony here uh, and I called it the planting of a soul dream. And underneath that very apple tree that you see there, we got the community to come out and everybody had written their soul dream. What is it that that space within yourself? What is it that yearning, that wanting that you wish to manifest in your life and carry through? Um, what is calling you forward? And we planted all, all of our soul dreams underneath this apple tree. So as you can see, um, those dreams are being nourished by the garden as well as they are nourishing the garden. Uh, the fact that it is a spiral, you know, a mandala or a spiral garden, um, all the energy both begins and ends in this space where, you know, where you see the Buddha. It is the place where the energy radiates outwards and where the energy comes back again. So here we are in the northwest, the place of the hummingbird, and the hummingbird is a very special being and it's a special ally that allows us to travel in between worlds, that allows us and guides us into being in, you know, the kind of direct communication with the one source, with spirit, with the God of your own understanding. Um, I stand here with edible flowers from the garden and we have marshmallow, which is that big tall plant right there. We have cornflower, we have borash and we have nasturtiums and it is really um, my intention my hope and my dream that through touring our garden and um, you're able to anchor into this space as a living sanctuary and i want to ask you one more question you know what is your soul dream um, when we first started the garden you know i started dreaming of this space perhaps seven years ago five years ago we got to, into this um, land and we started building perhaps about four years ago. Um, back then, believe it or not, this was an empty field of grass. Yet, you now somebody had a dream. What was growing here before us? I don't know. Yeah, but all the cedars were here. The cedars are in the shape of a large rectangle and the mandala garden is in the shape of a sacred circle. Um, so, what is your soul dream? And can you, you know, can you, can you quiet yourself enough to anchor into this living sanctuary and allow your heart to guide you, allow hummingbird medicine to come to you and guide you. So from our garden to your heart, may your guidance, may your journey be a beautiful one.